Hi, hi, amazing internet and beautiful creatures of the beyond. Hope you're all doing great. Um, I missed you guys. <laughs> and I hope you have a wonderful day, night, eclipse or apocalypse, depending on where you are. And hmm, today I was thinking about discussing a bit about relationships. And relationships are very broad. But I'm going to put them in the context of art in a bit. Because personally, I think through relationships, we develop ourselves and our art and our social skills, of course. But the idea is that art, in my opinion, must never be learned. It must be stolen, in quotes. So the more friends that you have, and depending in what area of art you're interested in, and if you have friends in those specific areas, you can stick around, socialize with them, be a little spy, steal from their creation, well, in quotes again. I mean, get inspired. And have a nice circle of friends, and always a nice source of inspiration. <laughs> but... Um, how do you develop relationships? Be it uh, friendships or love relationships or platonic relationships. Well, um, I see there are like three categories that describe a relationship. And I'm going to start with the first one, which is communication. And again, communication is very broad. But... Hmm. Com communication is not only just talking. Um, there's two subcategories of communication. There's active and passive. So active means like I come towards you and say, hey, how are you? And you're a total stranger and, stranger and you start running away from me. But no, in case you will start a conversation back with me, um, it would start building up. So that is an active communication. A passive communication is that you come towards me and you start the communication to communicate towards me, but I am silent. And not silent in an impolite way, but silent in listening to what you have to say. And then if I have the opportunity and you don't do a continuous monologue, <laughs> I can input my feedback or my opinion. So active and passive. And Usually this is not easy to get into a conversation because you might be the sort of person that is more, I don't know, um, secluded perhaps, or you like your privacy, um, or maybe you're more outgoing and it's easy for you to make friends or to meet new acquaintances. But, or sometimes you can be a mix of two. For example, I am more private when I'm living in my own little burrow in the woods. But when I am outside in the public, I like to socialize and to expand my friendships. Um, so in other words, you can be an introvert or an extrovert or a mix of both. And... Approaching someone is not usually the easiest thing for an introvert. And I've been an introvert in my past when I was a little cub. I was afraid to talk to girls. So afraid to talk to girls that one girl was poking me with a pencil and I was so afraid to turn around because I didn't want to meet her gaze. Until a girl really caught me in her arms and then I couldn't escape and well... From there on, you know, the rest is history. <laughs> I became a little devil. But um, the idea is that if you're an introvert, um, one trick that I can relate to you, and of course, this is not an advice or anything like that. Use your best uh, judgment when you are there in the wild with other human beings. But one trick that I've learned is about body language. So I was once sitting in a train going from 
point B to point A. And I was just minding my own build business, you know, and there were other people around me. And there was this dude right across of me. And he just started talking to me. And I, I didn't know how to react at first. I was like weirded out. It's like, why did he pick me? What what's wrong with me? Is there something special? Or and in my mind I was thinking, well, maybe he saw my face and I have that one of those faces that uh, invite people to talk, or maybe he's he thought I'm in a certain way, or anyway. But no, the reality is my body language. And I am a very chill out person. I, I like to just sit very relaxed in very comfortable positions well not super comfortable uh, but you know casual and like for example if you're sitting with your arms crossed that is obviously a sign that you you're restricting the space around you so you're always expressing yourself through your body language even if it's unconscious so if you're just sitting calmly, put your hands up, um, parallel to your body, you know, uh, on the side of your uh, of your body, I mean. And just breathe in, breathe out, relaxed, think happy thoughts. Then people kind of observe that and they catch on your vibe and they start the conversation from there. So you don't have to do anything. It's just the easiest thing in the world, you know. And... I've had a lot of people start conversations with me and teach me things that I didn't know I would need in life. And they were like very important life lessons. But people, like in general, the humankind, we are social animals. And we feel a need to communicate, to have closure, to to constantly get in touch with other people, to express our feelings and thoughts. Because we love to debate and be challenged and sometimes we want to make a point and so on so it's really interesting how people can approach you uh, but if you are uh, more of an active person who wants to get in contact with other people again look at their body language see if they're relaxed don't try to, to make them feel awkward in the sense that they want to run away instantly just talk Small things like about the weather, about mutual interests, and so on. Usually music is a good uh, starting point from my personal experience. And rock, people that listen to rock music are usually the easiest to to communicate with. Of course, I'm, I'm not making uh, stereotypes, but this is just my experience. We can look at cooperation. And... Cooperation, like if you're in a relationship with a loved one uh, or even a friend, you are always complementary to each other. So what do I mean by that? For example, maybe I am good at cultivating um, plants and you're very good at cooking them and maybe eating them. So we both have skills that complement each other and can make it easier for us to start projects and um, even go towards a a silent communication where we just understand uh, each other through simply by uh, glances or simply by knowing our um, our steps of how we always proceed and another important aspect the third category is coexistence and coexistence usually means that we all have flaws you have flaws i have flaws we're not perfect we're imperfect beings but it is important how to we tolerate these flaws and for example you like to listen to music very loud and maybe at three o'clock in the morning i like to sleep but If I ask you nicely, well, can you, we can compromise on that. Can you lower the volume so I can sleep and I not murder you in the middle of the night? Perfect. And this means that we slowly improve together and we can always uh, fix our flaws by the feedback we get from our friends and our loved ones. And that is a combination between communication and cooperation. 
So that is what makes us tick in a way from a social point of view. And I know it's not easy. It's never easy to just put uh, theory and practice. But I always um, look at these things that are challenging in a way like how you go and take a swim, even if you don't know how to swim. The first feeling when you get next to the water is to just, I need to put my feet in the water. So that is the, it's a leap of faith, basically. So you don't know if the water is hot or it's cold until you try it. And, well, obviously you can put your foot or your or your hand in it to test it. But one way or the other, you have to, to expand outside of your comfort bubble. So taking a leap of faith is always going to push you to do things that you did not expect yourself to be capable of. And then you will surprise yourself. Maybe in a conversation that you start, you won't know how to stop it afterwards. Uh, you will have too much fun. Well, it always depends. It's like I, I said, use your best judgment. Don't go crazy. Just do it incrementally in small steps, obviously. Don't just... Well, or you you can take the approach of just jumping head on and see what happens. Of course, sometimes you can get hurt, but this is the risk of life. And risk can get uh, big risk, can get big rewards. So, yeah, play around, see what happens. <laughs> but I know you guys are so super awesome, and whatever happens, it will be good because. As artists, you always have a pure heart and you always look to achieve the best results, even when everybody underestimates you. Okay, this is all I had to say. I hope I didn't babble for too, too long. <laughs> See you guys next time. Bye, 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 bye.